Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. And once again, I'm super amazed at the latest patch. In this latest patch, it almost seems like our request was answered, and they have added in solar panels. Yes, solar panels. So, uranium is not the only source of power in the game. The panels themselves are really nice, really high quality models to be honest, and they look absolutely perfect. Obviously you can't mount them at angles, and the only other issue that I've noticed is that you can't mount them on rotors like many of you would like to do. Anyway, this ship in the background, or station, is the Snow Queen. It's designed by Dan, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's an absolute beautiful space station. You'll have to check it out. Anyway, let's move on to more of the components, more of the facts around these new items. Let's try to look at this from a survival perspective. We need to work out, is it worth getting a solar panel, or is it worth sticking with a uranium reactor. So both of them have the benefits and the first thing that we need to do is just have a quick comparison of what we'd need to build the other items. So for this one the most important part is the solar cells. So to build a large one we need 64 solar cells and I've got a feeling they're going to need some platinum. And let's actually have a look at a standard small reactor. So computers 25, 100 reactor components so it's, it's not too much to be honest in that reactor everything there is quite simple to build and let's actually have a look again right so let's head over to our assembler and see what a solar panel needs so production solar panel so a solar panel needs uh, 0.2 um, of gold ingot 2.5 of silicon wafer and platinum ingot 0.10 so platinum is pretty rare the only other item that i think uses platinum is the actual detector component so if you have a detector on your ship you could disassemble it uh, and you need probably 0.10 of course so let's build our little solar panel and have a look at it so we'll bring that over to our inventory we've already got three on us and if we drop that down we can actually have a look at it so it's quite a small item itself and it didn't seem to weigh that much either so let's get some construction components and let's get all the solar panels we'll need and we'll actually build ourselves the item itself so six please so we're going to place that there and we're going to need a welder so weld this on up so we're going to have to get probably a few items actually out so there's a solar panel being built very slow, very slow process building this thing. Mm. Anyway, I'll skip ahead. Right, I'm just finishing off the actual control panel. It took around two or three minutes to actually construct the whole thing, and it does require a lot of resources. So we've actually got the charge panel here, so we've got up to four levels of charge, and in the direction to the sun will give it different amounts. Obviously, putting in the shade is going to give it a very low number of possibly even turn it off completely so one one little green square represents about 1.42 kilowatts or watts depending if you're in a big or small ship and then on the two bar it represents about 2.94 or a little bit more and then on three it's around 3.7 kilowatts or watts and then finally on the actual all full full blown one we're going to be talking around a complete 4.73 to 5 kilowatts so we can actually do quite a lot with this thing what I'm going to do is actually show you by turning off our standard sort of reactor so we've got a reactor here and we're just going to turn our small reactor off and you'll be able to see what actually happens basically what utilities we need what's going on what the actual problem we've got an overload because we need more power and it's pulling out so if we start turning some stuff off Turn the refinery off for instance and we turn the assembler we should bring the power down to something that's actually usable so we've still got an overload our charging and our utility is still massively too high so we'll have to turn off completely everything i mean the solar panels don't pack much of a punch and that's something that you really need to take consideration you need to turn it into a, a solar farm to actually make it worth its while so if we move over here, we have a rotor here, and basically what many of you probably thinking is, oh, I'll put in a rotor and I can just rotate it wherever I go in the direction of the sun. But the actual power won't transfer the rotor, so you will transfer through it. So you won't actually get anything out of it that way. Now, let's move on to something a little bit more interesting. 
So, have you ever heard of a plasma cutter? A tool that basically cuts through armor using like a hot melting sort of material. So, that's basically what we have here. So, let's say you've just returned to your absolute beautiful ship. You've not played Space Engineers for a while and you didn't know that this patch did this. So, I'm just going to inform you. So, before you get in your ship, you're going to want to stop this from happening. I'm going to just accelerate to demo what happens. There we go. I have just melted my ship away. And I've basically melted that way because my engines were touching each other. And any engine or any object that is touching each other like that, anything will collision. It has about a three block radius. So I'll show you. So it has about a three block radius and anything that touches in that three rock radius behind it will just basically be melted apart. And it means that small, tight engine bays are going to be a thing of the past. And there's going to be a lot of broken ships, unless you remember this. So do be careful. And I don't want to see your ships torn apart. Especially if you've not saved them and forgot. So we'll just actually move a little bit forward. There we go. There's some engines still functioning. So once you've actually placed your engines correctly on a ship, you'll encounter another problem. You might come into land and you'll realise that you've just burned the landing pad below you and damaged it. So a quick solution for this is just hold down the space bar and burn a massive hole in it. But that's not going to solve anything at all. So what I found was a way around this was to make the actual landing pad for your ship out of heavy armor. So what I'll just do quickly to demo this is just do a quick landing pad there and we'll fly over and I'll show you how it doesn't actually damage it. And now this is quite interesting because this means that places where ships that have to take off will have to be now made out of heavy armor so you don't actually damage your own ship so we can just land it there and we can accelerate basically all day without causing any damage at all. So that's the first thing. Now once you've done this you start to think about weapon applications for something like this and me being a guy who likes to build weapons in Space Engineers thought of a hell of a lot and to be honest some of them might even be more deadly than the famous twag or whatever you'd like to call it <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to take this over and basically the concept is of reversing up and just basically locking our ship in place so I'm going to use the big engine because that one can actually thrust further away the small engines thrust about four or five blocks from the side you can just see how it's just dinting it a bit and if we just get ourselves into a very careful precision position like so and then we begin thrusting you can basically drill into the side of a ship and I think that's absolutely deadly I mean this was a little bit of a concept that I took a little bit further um, I'll show you it in a few days time is I built a piston on the front of a small ship and basically it pushes the piston into the side and the thruster tries to thrust back to resist going forward and as it resists, you actually put a hole in and you can use it to breach an enemy hull of a ship. So there's lots of applications of this. And I know a lot of you are going to be sad because your beautiful tight-knit engine compartments are going to be completely ruined. But you don't have to deal with it like we all are. It's a space adventure and you're just on for the ride. Also be careful, these, these engines can be quite hazardous for people too. So do be careful and don't don't smell any engine fumes. But apart from that, I just wanted to show you the actual patch, its features, and help you in the decision of maybe you'll mount solar panels on your ship, maybe you won't. I'm gonna mount them on my station. I don't think I'll be mounting them on my ship anytime soon. Maybe maybe it's like a backup solution. But on my station it is a great way of just keeping all the utilities online, even if I am not there. Or maybe I'm mining, maybe I'm doing something else. It'll just keep the systems running. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.